What is up, Brick Church? Man, I'm so excited for today. In case we haven't had an opportunity to meet yet, my name is Taylor, and I'm your student pastor here at The Brick. So what today's gonna look like is different than normal. What we're gonna do is myself and Pastor Jerry Callahan, we're gonna sit down, and we're gonna have a conversation about our series we just wrapped up, Who Are We Now? And so we're gonna go through each week, and you're gonna be able to check each one of those out as we ask questions about what that meant for us, but also what that means for you. And so if you get into this, you're like, man, I missed that week, or you wanna go back and re-listen to it or catch it again, you can find us on our podcast, our YouTube channel, and our Facebook page. We're really excited for what God's gonna do for you today. So lean into this, engage with us, let's see what we have for you. All right, guys, uh, welcome to <clears throat> Sunday's experience. We're so excited that you've decided to join us online. The possibility of snowmageddon, the ice that's on the roads, we decided to go straight online this weekend. And so to do that, we really wanted to recap an essential series that we went through at the beginning of the year called Who Are We Now? Uh, and if you weren't here with us during that series, Today is a good day to get caught up on what that series meant to us, what it established for us as a church. So we're excited about today. We're just going to be here with you a few minutes and talk about how that applies to you, um, what it means for the church, and what it means for all of us going forward. So we're excited. So let's jump in. Uh, week one, what we did was we really talked through uh, being fully devoted and what that means to be fully devoted and to be a fully devoted follower of Christ because that's the core of who we are. And maybe the bombshell for some of you, um, but maybe just you kind of saw it coming for others of you and others of you are waiting on the news to get out. It's like, of course this is what's gonna happen. But for some people, it was a, a surprise and some people were already planning on it. Um, we really talked through the decision as a church to not go back to Pastor Craig Rochelle as our teaching pastor and talk through what drove us to that decision and how much of the things of, of what we are still exists, like who we are still exists. Our DNA is still the same. What we're called to do as a church going forward has remained the same. So what's different, what's new, and why do we make that decision was really week one. And in the process of that, we talked about how much prayer, how much thought went into that decision to go forward and not go backwards, to not take the step back, to not make a decision based on the fear of what could be said or what people are gonna do, but to really take the step forward that God has called us to. Um, and we spent so much time praying, and for me personally, I spent so much time processing and trying to make sure that I was hearing God give me an answer that this is what the church is called to do. It's not about what people around you want to happen. It's not about what people don't want to happen. It's not about any other motives that you might have internally or externally. It's really about the decision to hear the voice of God of, uh, about who you are. And once you can figure out who you are, then you figure out what you're called to do. Yeah. So, That's yeah, good. so any thoughts on that week one or what, <clears throat> what came up? Yeah, I think one question for me with week one that uh, just kind of, I was processing for me, and I think it's true for a lot of people watching and maybe first time listening. Also, if you haven't listened to any of these, check them out on Apple Podcasts. We've got YouTube, uh, thebrick.church. We've got them all archived, so you do not want to miss this series. So if there's a week we hit that you haven't seen, go check it out. Um, so in week one, the thing that's interesting to me is how do you gauge, um, like, how did you know it was the right call? Because it's interesting to think that something that was successful in one season is still something God might be calling us to do something different, right? It's not like it was broken and like we weren't right. reaching people and God wasn't helping people, yet we still made a decision that we felt like we were called to to switch and go live preaching and switch a lot of those things. So for you uh, and for people at home, how do, how do you figure that out? Like what is a person at home, how do they know when God's calling them to do something? Like it's a very big decision you made, so. so yeah, like, so uh, th this might be unique to me, so I can't give you 100% clear answer on every decision you're ever going to make. Um, but for me, I start at the very beginning feeling uh, when it's really a big decision. So coming to Muskogee from when we moved from Moore to Muskogee and, and leading the church here, there was one of those big life-changing decisions. And we started to feel a stir before that was ever even an option. Uh, what I mean by stir is we started to feel like, hey, something's going to shift or should shift. You know, like, you're, like it doesn't even have to make sense most of the time. You're like, I kind of like where I'm at. I like what we're doing as a church. I like Pastor Craig Rochelle. I like what we're doing. 
why why am I feeling uh, almost a, a spiritual or internal rub, like a disconnect? Something isn't adding up yeah. to this working. And it, even though the numbers say two plus two equals four, internally you're feeling like that's not the whole answer. There's more to it. So once you start to feel that, you start asking questions. And for us as a church, we start asking those questions um, with each other, like key leaders, our, our board, having these conversations and saying, hey, let's pray about this. These are things that we're feeling. We're feeling God stirring something in us. What does it mean? Are we shifting some other areas of what we're doing? Are we supposed to shift our teaching past? Are we supposed to shift these things? What is supposed to change? Because we're feeling something. Yeah. And then in that process, you're asking questions specifically asking really open questions for people to be honest with you. Sometimes we lead with questions uh, where we want a certain answer, but asking in a way that says, no, honestly tell me what you think is the best choice. Not what I want to hear, not what's going to not hurt my feelings, but what are you feeling? What is God leaning on your heart? And I need you to be honest with me. And then the next part and the most important part is a moment of prayer and fasting. Yeah. Uh, a few days, weeks, whatever it takes, to really solidify all of this information you're getting, what you're feeling internally, to really hear what God is saying and to hear the voice of God tell you and give you a peace. And when I say the voice of God tell you, I mean there's an internal peace uh, of like, I don't know all the reasons why this is right, but for some reason I know this is right. Yeah. That's where you get to. Like I, I can't tell you exactly why this works or why it's going to work or why I have to do this, yeah. but because I've gone through these conversations and through this prayer time and through this fasting time, I get to a place where it's like, at some point you get to a place where it's like, I don't know for sure, but I know we're called to do this yeah. and I know we're called to take the steps. So it's kind of, that's my process yeah. and that's kind of behind the scenes process of, of, of how we get to that decision. That's good. I yeah. love that. Uh, so week two, we titled the message more. Mm -hmm. um, and the core value we came off of was um, we give up things that we love for things that we love even more because it's an honor to sacrifice for Christ in his church. So what's a quick overview of that message? Yeah, so um, <laughs> we really talked through Paul's difficulty and actually Paul's struggles in what he was doing to get to more. Um, and so these scriptures came up where Paul was going through so much and Paul was going through like shipwrecks and beatings and beaten half to death and uh, he was hungry, he was thirsty, he was left, left for dead multiple times. He was in all of these things that Paul is going through you don't, you don't give up things you love for things you love even more, which is where the title comes from. Yeah. You don't do that unless the more is big enough. And Paul didn't go through what he went through unless the more on the other side was big enough. And so for us, we've kind of processed through, for us as a church, to hear the voice of God is big enough to hear what he's called us to do is big enough to give up something we love. Man, we love the season we were in with Pastor Craig being our teaching pastor, but we felt God calling us to more, to do things more, and there were doors that were going to start to be opened because of that. Like yeah. there's a potential now that if we want to, or the door is open to launch a church in a community um, that has the same driving heartbeat as us, we can do that in a way that we couldn't before. And so the more was big enough to go through the difficulty of the hard decision, letting other people down that like, man, Pastor Craig's my pastor. This is really, I mean, this is really difficult for me to, to hear this news. Well, yeah, we, we get it. I'm in the same boat. Like Pastor Craig was my pastor for years and years, and who I am is, is a lot to do with things that he's invested in me, even from a distance. You know, the things that he's poured into his church and how that's impacted this church and the things he's done as a leadership. And when I was on staff with Live Church, I'm a better person because of his investment, even if it was at a distance. So it was hard for me. Yeah. But the more made it worth giving up something that I loved. And so we get that. We understand the difficulty in that but know that more is worth it. To give up something you love, there needs to be more that's big enough. So that's kind of what we process there. That's good. That's, that's so good. Uh, uh, so week three was spiritual contributor is what we titled it. And so we hit our core value that we are spiritual contributors, not spiritual consumers, because the church doesn't exist for us, but we are the church. We exist for the world. Mm -hmm. uh, this is like a core core value for you. Like if, if you were ranking them, this one's towards the top for you. So uh, kind of what... Well, Talk to that a little bit. Yeah, so the scripture that we used in week three, really we, we used it from the very beginning. We stuck into this scripture. Um, was found in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. I want to read this to you. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me 
to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So in Luke 4, Jesus is speaking and he's actually reading out of Isaiah and he tells them, this prophecy is fulfilled in me. This is the body that I'm living in right now. And this is what I'm called to do. And so what we kind of walk through is this idea that if that's what Jesus was called to do on the earth, and now it says we're the body of Christ, shouldn't we be doing that? Shouldn't we be recognizing that we're here to proclaim the good news to the poor? We're here to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. We're here to, to help people see things that they couldn't see, they're blinded to, to set the oppressed free, that that's our call. And to do that, that's where that core value comes in. Yeah. That, that, that's what we're here for. Like, it no longer is that the church is there for me. Once I've signed up to be on Jesus' team and to be the body of Christ, now it's, it's me. I'm the body of Christ. And I'm called to be the contributor and be a part of helping other people come to know Jesus. I'm called to be the hands and feet of Jesus to my world. So when we talk about being spiritual contributors, it's an essential to who we are that we recognize that at some point this church stops being about me and starts being about how I can have other people come into the body of Christ. And so it's kind of yeah. the goal of that is for every person to walk out knowing that they're called to be in the body of Christ and they're called to use their gifts and whatever they are, however big or small they may seem, to use your gifts so that somebody can connect to the body of Christ and be set free by the good news that is Jesus. That's good. Uh, so what do you think, uh, and maybe this is like a layup question, but what's a way I can figure out internally? Like me, if I'm part of the church watching this, how do I figure out whether or not I'm actually contributing, right? Because I think the way you contribute in one season is vastly different than the way you contribute in another season. And so as I'm growing in Christ, as I'm coming to the church, as I'm a part of this, wherever my spectrum of faith plays out, what's a good question or a good way to gauge whether or not I'm actually contributing? Because mm -hmm. I think sometimes we lie to ourselves and say we're contributing, but we're not. Yeah. Um, so how would I figure that out if I'm at home trying to figure out, all right, am I walking this core value out? Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, so to figure out, am I walking it out? Uh, the fact that you're already asking, the fact that you started to ask that question of the person's at home is like, am I contributing is a really good yeah. indication that you probably have started. The person who hasn't started contributing at all is probably not even asking the question, am point. I a contributor? Am I helping out? Am I part of the church? They're, they may be on a spot in their journey where they're not ready to contribute because they're not yet in the body. They're not connected to the body. They don't have the life of Christ in them, and they, they need the church. And so in that message, we, we recognize that. Like when you first come to church, you need Jesus. You're not Jesus yet. You're yeah. not his body. You're not connected to him yet. And that's what the church is exactly for. Yeah. So early on, it makes total sense that you're just like, I'm surviving. Like maybe I'm a baby Christian, and I'm not there yet. Yeah. But even early on, you should start to contribute. And what I would say is, one, if you're asking the question, it's a good good step. But maybe have conversations with people like that, that, that you know are in the body of Christ and connected and have that conversation. Like, am I, am I helping out at the church? Now, we make it as simple as possible. Um, we, we challenge people to attend one service and, and serve one service. So it's like you and your family can serve together and attend together. It's a very simple process. It's very doable. Our services are shorter so that people can pull that off and can do that without being here all day long. Yeah. It's very feasible to do. Um, but all that being said, I would say I would rather be caught trying yeah. than sitting still waiting, right? In, in the baseball ana analogy, I'd rather be struck out swinging than be watching the ball go by me. I would yeah. much rather give it a shot. Uh, one of the pastors, as a campus pastor at the OKC campus, used to say, um, for God, it's easier to steer a thoroughbred than to kick a donkey, yeah. meaning when you're in movement, it's easier for God to steer you into the right direction than it is to get you off your rear and start something. So if you're wondering, am I contributing? If you have to ask that question, if you're not contributing at all, just start somewhere. Yeah. We, we, we got pastors all over this church that want to help you find your spot, not because we need you here, but because we believe you're called and you're gifted and we want to see you thrive in your gift. So if you'll just start, you can have the conversations, the process. Well, I love this. This really works for me. Ah, oh, that feels weird. I don't, I don't, I'm not really good at that. I don't think I should do that anymore. And we can process through the conversation of what's the best spot for you to contribute. But you have to start. You have to yeah. sign up. You have to come have the conversation. You have to face your fear and just do the thing. Just take the first step. The first step is the hardest. So just take the step and trust that God's going to guide each step because Scripture says He will. That's yeah. good. Uh, so our last week of the series is maybe my favorite message 
uh, and we titled it uh, Invite, which to me on its face is an interesting title considering how you know we're still dealing with a pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, kind of walk me through and walk everyone online through it, then I get to hear it. Why are we telling people to invite? And what's that look like? Why does that matter? Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, so uh, one, <laughs> even in the midst of a pandemic, um, there are people that are legitimately immunocompromised and hopefully are joining us for our 1130 experience. It's always live. And so there is a, a world in which that person right now, the best thing for them to do is catch it online, to be a part yeah. online, is to, to, to visit that. But there's also what I did early on is kind of made the excuse before I ever asked the person. I went ahead and just like, well, they don't really want to come because fill in the blank. So in the midst of that thought process, I gave an excuse for them when they're going to the grocery stores, they're going to work, they're going out to eat, they're doing all the things. And so I would rather them tell me no and rather give the opportunity for them to follow Jesus than to make an excuse before I ever ask. And that's what I was doing earlier on, is making an excuse for them. But we're called to invite people to come to know Jesus. And so if if they're they've got to make that decision on their own about how hungry they are, how much they need it, but we provide an opportunity to still invite them, them still be a part of the community online, even if they can't be in person. So I can keep inviting, giving that opportunity. Second to that, and what we talked about in this message is Following Jesus is so essential. It's so important. We believe it's eternity, right? We're talking about our eternity. We're talking about the the gift of eternity and the fact that our sins are forgiven. And we're building on a foundation of the early church that gave up their lives to follow Jesus. Not only that, when they were inviting, there were people that knew coming to their house meant they might lose their life. Like yeah. they would give them an invite. Obviously, they didn't have the cards that we have, but they'd be like, hey, you can come be a part of the good news. Let me tell you about the good news. And that person knew that that was contrary to what the Roman Empire would be okay with. And I might lose my life for showing up. And they were still inviting and people were still showing up because the good news of Jesus Christ was worth it, especially when people are looking and are hungry and are needing to know and are in that spot where Jesus is trying to get a hold of them, trying to connect to them. So don't make excuses. Just give God the opportunity. We've got plenty of ways for you to connect and to be a part, even if you can't show up in person. So there's no excuse not to yeah. invite. That's what we do. We'll do anything short of sin to reach people who don't know Christ. Anything, whatever it takes, however we have to do it, we're going to do it because to reach people no one's reaching, we'll have to do things that no one is doing. And so one of those things is inviting, even in the midst of a pandemic, even if it's the church online, no matter how it is, we want to get the good news of Jesus Christ to people and help them in the journey of becoming fully devoted. That's good. Yeah. And one of my favorite lines from that message to wrap it all up is, in a broken world, it needs an inviting church. Yeah. Uh, and so not just our ability to invite people, but also in fact itself being inviting. That when you come here, you feel like you can belong, even if you don't believe. For sure. That wherever you're at in your spectrum of faith, that this is a home to you, not just uh, a place that you hope no one yells at you. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's something unique about Jesus' entire life, I feel like, that is constantly inviting you in. Not just, hey, come follow me, but like giving you a seat at this table. For sure. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, we're glad that you joined us today, and if you are feeling invited, if you're that person that is on the other end of that invite, and you need to know one of two things. One, you might feel invited because it's time to step up and contribute. If it's time to call the Brick Church your home, make that step. Let us know in the comments. Send us a message. Secondly, maybe you're the person who you're stuck in your house for whatever reason because of the ice on the ground or whatever it may be, uh, you're, you're at home and you're not getting this message by accident, but Jesus is trying to invite you to become a part of the body of Christ, to be connected to the life of Christ, to find out the good news that you can follow him. And if that's you today, I mean, we're not going to do anything weird. All I need you to do is to believe it in your heart in this moment and confess it with your mouth. That's what scripture says in Romans, that we're going to believe in our heart that he's the Lord, that he's the Savior, that he died on the cross for our sins. And we're going to believe that he's the Lord, meaning the master of our life, and we're going to confess it with our mouth. And if that's you and you're at home, just confess it. Jesus, I give you my life. I want to follow you with it. I want to follow you with my life. I trust you with my life. I'm ready to follow you. That's it. If you made that decision, let us know. We want to reach out. We want to help you continue that journey of following him. 
wherever you're at. Thank you for joining us today. We're so excited that you did in the midst of a crazy year in 2021, starting out snowstorms and ice storms, all those things. We can still connect in this avenue. We're really blessed in this time. So thanks for joining us. We're, we're excited. We hope we can be back next week in person. We can't wait to see you here. If you can be here, if not, we'll see you right here online. And remember, whoever finds God, finds, finds life. life. We're so glad you joined us for today's message at the Brick Church. If you're still hanging out, you may be wondering, how can I be a part? Well, we'd love to connect with you, shoot us a message, connect with us. But if you'd like to give, there's two easy ways to give. You can give through the text number, which is 45888. You'll simply text the word BRICK. That's 45888, and it'll set you up with a credit card, debit card, or bank account. The other way you can give is through our website, thebrick.church slash give. Whichever way you give, thank you for being a part of all that God is doing here at the Brick Church. And you are contributing to be a part of leading people to become fully devoted followers of Christ.